Welcome back to another online claw hammer banjo lesson. I'm Benny Blue, and this is the second episode I've made. Uh, today, for our technical lesson, we're going to focus on getting to know our metronomes. Uh, this is the first of a three-part series of basically just kind of getting you used to working with a metronome and getting you acquainted. Some people don't like gnomes, garden gnomes, Christmas gnomes. If that's you, I'm going to try my hardest today to at least get you to like your metronome. And second, we're going to get to a tune today. We're going to learn one of my favorite tunes, Big Eyed Rabbit. Um, traditionally, it's a tune. And so as a banjo player, you'd probably be playing uh, in your G tuning, capoed up. Um, I'll, I'll do it in G so you don't need to capo up. So we'll play uh, Big Eyed Rabbit in G. But first, let's get to this... Uh, technical lesson with the metronomes. Um, a lot of people are a little fearful of metronomes, I think. I th they they might think that if you practice with a metronome, it's going to make your playing um, too robotic or uh, too mechanical or without feeling or something. Um, don't be worried about that. Uh, make no mistake, a metronome is a robot. There, there's, there's no inherent musicality to a metronome. Um, but it's not inherently unmusical either. It's it's just a machine. And if you are able, if you have such command of your groove that you're able to make a machine sound like it's swinging, um, then you're getting to a really good point in your in your rhythmic uh, practice. But it's not it's not necessarily obvious how you should work with a metronome. Um, oh, another good point. Like think about all the electronic dance music, even starting with disco. Uh, this, this is like music that people have become emotionally attached to, and it all starts with a robotic beat. So, there, like I said, there's nothing inherently unmusical about a robot. Um, it's I mean, here's my metronome. It's just a beep. It's just a perfectly precise beep placed in time, um, and it's up to you to make it musical. If you can't make a metronome sound musical, then you need to practice with a metronome more. <laughs> and if you can make a metronome uh, sound musical, then you should still practice with a metronome more. Um, I think one of the easiest hang-ups for people with, with playing with a metronome uh, is that they're not used to listening to a metronome. So anytime you're adding something else to your practice, um, be it a metronome, or if you put on a record and you play along to a record, or if you get some other musicians together and you play as a group, um, anytime that it's just that it's not just you in your room with your instrument working things out, um, your your main set of skills has to shift to listening. Now there's there's definitely a time and a place for you sitting alone in a room with just your banjo. You get mechanical things under your fingers. You work on a new tune. There's definitely a lot of worth in that kind of practice but when you add another thing to it you can't just focus on what your hands are doing anymore you have to shift your main source of attention to listening to that metronome or guitar player or record or whatever it is that you that you're adding to what you're doing um, you have to think about listening to it and it sounds really obvious but I think this is why a lot of folks get off using a metronome quickly they try it and it's hard, and it's they don't really think that they're fitting in with the metronome very well, and so they shut it off, and they don't do it anymore. And I think it's unfortunate because it probably came down to them not remembering to listen. You have to attentively think about listening, and that's what we're going to work on today. Like I said, this is a the first part of a three-part um, getting to know your metronome series, and today we're just going to think about listening to it. We're not even going to have our banjos out when we work with our metronome today. We're just going to get to know what it does and how to pay attention to it. So this is my metronome. Um, they come in all shapes and sizes. You can get the, the old TikTok kind, or you can use, um, there's a million apps on your phone that you can get a metronome app. Um, but they all have basically the same controls. Um, they all should have a volume. And that's important when it comes to listening to a metronome. You want to make sure that you have adequate volume. You can control um, 
the the way that the beats are grouped. So if you're playing in four four time, you'd have a beep 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 beep. Every fourth beat would be a strong beat. That would be like four four time. If you were playing in two, like a march, it would be beep 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 beep. There'd be a strong beat every other beat. Um, if you were playing in three time, uh, if you were playing a waltz, you'd have beep 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 beep. Every third beat would be strong. So uh, you can you can tell your metronome how you want it to break up the beats. And then, lastly, probably most importantly, is you can set the tempo. You can tell your metronome how fast or how slow you want it to play. Um, and so I'm going to get mine set to 88 beats per minute right now. So within a minute, it's going to click 88 times. So it happens just a little more frequently than once per second. And I'm going to have mine set to one four time, but basically it's just all the same beat. It's just going to go beep, 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 beep. So in, in mine, it has the beat is set to one. Um, instead of two or three or four, I'm just going to have it set to one. So it's going to sound like this. Now, for your, for your own practice at home, use your own metronome, put it on a tempo um, that you want to start out at. I'm starting out here for today's exercise at 88 beats per minute. Um, but for the sake of watching this video, don't use your own metronome right now. Just go along with my metronome. So I'm going to put this on, and before we even do anything, before we even participate with the metronome at all, we're just going to listen. Just We're just going to sit, and we're just going to listen to it. And this is important. This is an important part of it. You, before you can play along to a metronome, you want to sit and just listen to it and kind of let that tempo get into your body. So the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to start to apply this tempo to uh, the groove that we already know is claw hammer banjos. Um, if you've taken lessons with me or just about any claw hammer banjo instructor I know of, they teach this simple groove pattern called bum ditty um, on the banjo that that works its way into being a, a stroke, a bum, a strum, a did, and a thumb, the D. this is is basic it's basically a two beat groove the bum is one beat and the ditty is the second beat uh, so another way you can think of this is you're going one two and one two and one two and the first beat is the bum takes up the whole first beat and the second beat is split into two halves the did the first half and the d is the second half so we're not even going to get to the ditty right now First thing I want you to do is we're going to put this uh, metronome back on. We're going to listen to it for a second. And then I'm just going to say bum. And then I'm going to feel the space of that second beat. And then we're going to bum. And then we're going to feel the space of that second beat. Like this. Two, here we go. Bum. 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 And, and I encourage you to rock like this. You know, feel this sway. Over here, here. You go bum, 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 bum. And, and the point of this is I want you to feel that space that we're not speaking on, what will be the ditty, right? I just want you to feel that whole space. You know, we're, we're, we're giving the downbeat its bum. And then with our bodies and with our minds, our internal, our internal metronome, we're feeling that other space. It's this, it's this undulation. Bum, 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 bum. You know, you can envision something, maybe a, a bouncing ball. Bum, 
and see that ball drop in that space, even though we're not articulating with our mouths yet, you feel the, the presence of that beat in time, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Now, believe it or not, we're grooving with our metronomes now. We're, we're establishing some kind of groove over this steady tempo that the metronome is offering. Boom, 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 boom. Try that. Either snap or clap or just pat your leg or something on what will be the ditty beat. So you got boom, 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 boom. Keep going. Boom, boom, boom. Good. Now again, I know this sounds really elementary, and it is, but it's actually uh, practicing with your metronome like this uh, is really reinforcing a lot of good habits in groove. Most importantly, listening. You're giving that metronome space to talk, and you're talking with it. Um... So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to give it the did. We're going to give it bum, did. Here we go. Bum, did. 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 And the last part of this exercise. Now again, this is just the first part of it. And I want you to try this at this tempo, 88. I want you to try it faster. And more importantly, I want you to try it slower. I'll, I'll do a couple of them right now. But obviously, you've probably guessed the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the D. Now, here's where it gets cool. Here's I geek out about this stuff because now you're really starting to talk with your metronome. The metronome doesn't give you anything in that space where the D goes of diddy, did D. You're providing the second half of that beat, and the metronome isn't providing it. So now you're really talking with your metronome you're working together you're listening to what it's saying and now you're offering something in a space where it's not saying anything here we go bum diddy 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 experiment with accenting different parts of it either the bum the did or the d and notice how that feels how does that change the groove Bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy bum versus bum diddy 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 bum diddy. We're grooving now. We're we're taking this mechanical, um, non-emotive uh, machine, and we're we're now superimposing something from within us on top of it. But it all starts with being able to hear it. You've got to be able to clearly hear it. And you've got to, within your mind, even before you pick up the banjo, do this every time you start playing with a metronome. Before you put your hands on the banjo, you want to get that tempo in your bones and you want to establish a communication between you and the metronome. This is the same thing you would do if you had another musician in the room with you. You can't just ignore that person. You've got to work together. You've got to listen to them, and they've got to listen to you. Now, the metronome can't listen to you back, and that's why it's good practice, is because you're forced to get on this very precise um, timekeeper to play with it. So let's, let's try it at um, just a little bit faster. I'm going to go to 96. It's not much faster, but it's a little bit faster so that the the um, the groove we had, or the tempo we had just gotten used to doesn't apply anymore. We've got to use our ears now. As soon as you go to a new tempo, you've got to use your ears to see where it's at. Bum, 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 bum did, bum did, bum did, bum did. 
bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy bum diddy it all comes down to using your ears now let's go to a slower tempo slower tempos are actually harder to play at because you have more time between beats um, I'm gonna get to that more next week but um, let's try it slower so now I'm at 66 listen to it for a second then we go bum 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 did bum did bum did bum did bum did d bum did d bum did d bum did d we're swinging baby Diddy bum, diddy bum, diddy. So do this with your metronome because you want to get used to listening to your metronome. Um, you're not going to get another the point part two of this lesson for another two weeks. So take some time and really do this. But you can do this all the time you're listening to music. If you put a record on while you're cleaning the house, you can in your head be going bum, diddy, bum, diddy along with the music. You can do this all the time. Anytime you're listening to music um, or a metronome, <laughs> you can be internalizing groove. You can be participating with the groove. You can be establishing groove over a grooveless entity. This thing has no inherent groove. You give it the groove. So take some time over the next few weeks and uh, start listening to your metronome. Even if you're used to working with a metronome, really simple exercises like this, um, can sort of remind your uh, uh, your ears to listen. Last week we worked on forging the mind body link. Today we're forging the mind ear link. All right, so let's get to this tune, Big Eyed Rabbit. It's one of my favorite tunes. Um, I uh, first heard it on an Evil City String Band CD. Uh, Steve Seelan and and Richie Stearns playing it. Uh, there's uh, Tommy Gerald has uh, an iconic version of it, Tommy Gerald and I think Fred Cockrum playing banjo. And um, uh, also a group I play with, the Brothers Blue, uh, we've done this tune. And so between the those three fiddlers, um, I've, I've worked up my own version of this tune. But, but just like the metronome, let's let our ears uh, take the f uh, first listen and uh, see what the tune is telling us before we get into it too far. So again, for any fiddle-savvy people out there, this is usually a cross A tune. Um, I'm playing it in cross G for the banjo players out there, so they don't need to go find their capo wherever it is. We'll just play it in G.
So there's Big Eyed Rabbit. I encourage you to listen to those other versions. Um, get, this, get the tune good and in your head um, before you start working on it. And the first thing we want to think about uh, are those chords. Well, actually, even before we get to the chords, you want to take note how many parts there are in the tune. So this is a two-part tune. You have that sort of more melodic A section with the with the verse. Yonder comes a rabbit, do I know? Um, and then sort of the more rhythmic and vampy uh, B section, which is the chorus. Big eyed rabbit's gone, gone, big eyed rabbit's gone. Um, and the, the chords are pretty standard chords that you're gonna run into in old time fiddle tunes. Um, it only uses the one chord, uh, which in our case here is G, the four chord, C, and your five chord, D. So G, C, D is the five chord. And of course the song is in G, so. Let's get a nice steady, slow bum ditty happening here. even simpler. Big eyed rabbit's gone, gone, big eyed rabbit's gone, big eyed rabbit's D, D7 back to G. So it's one, five, stay on the five, back to one, G, D, stay on the D, back to G. From the top again, yonder comes a rabbit, how do I see? chord progression. Um, go back and watch that last minute of video a few times until you really get a feel for those chord changes. There aren't many changes, um, but they're really critical, especially getting to that C chord, the first chord you go to at the beginning. Yonder comes a rabbit, and how do I know? C right there, and then you stay on the C. First shining in the sun, shining bright like me. So you hold that C for a little while. So if we want to think about playing this a little more melodically on the banjo, that's a perfectly adequate way to play the tune, just playing the chords behind a fiddle player or some other melody instrument. Um, but if you want to get a little more um, melody out of it, uh, this is uh, a million ways to do that. Uh, this is one way that I kind of hit a little more of that melody while keeping that bum ditty going as much as I can. I'll play it, I'll play it through a, a few times. Um, and then I'll break down some of those points. Top. Again. 
Okay, so let me break down a couple of those. I, I won't take it phrase by phrase because we just don't have the time on, on YouTube here. Um, but, uh, but go through what, what I just did there. You can slow it down and, and pause and replay it. And um, But let me break down a couple of the key things here. So like I mentioned, uh, the B part is really kind of more, more groove and a little more vampy, uh, less of the melody. So let's start there on the B part. You'll notice all the ape sections also end with like half of a B part. You go, Thunder comes red and how do I know? First shining sun, da da bum 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 ba da ba bum bum. That's how an A part ends, and a B part is big a da 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 big a da 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 ba ba da ba 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 ba. So the A part and the B part. Uh, the end of the A part is sort of just a mini B part. Um, and you'll notice I do a lot of this slide from the second fret of the third string to the fourth fret of the third string. Um, just the same, you could just play an open second string. Open second string. Uh, the slide is just replacing that open second string. middle finger for almost all those slides um, you use whatever finger feels comfortable but I think that middle finger is usually a pretty good strong slider finger um, so yeah that B part we've got the G D D G G D D back to G um, so I'll start with a slide and a ditty and then a pull off on the second fret and a ditty. And then I'm right on the D chord, so it's from the top of the B section, you've got slide, ditty, pull off, ditty, D. And then do it again. Slide, ditty, pull off, ditty, G. Now we're on the G chord. So you got a slide, ditty, pull off, ditty, D. A slide, ditty, pull off, G. Um, you can also start that B part with the little lick that I do on the fiddle. Go up to that C note, that's the first fret on the second string. And you can end it the same way. So now we've kind of got something to do. Uh, we have the chords, and we have a little something extra we can do during the B part and the end of the A part, right? So let's just look at the beginning of the A part. The yonder comes a rabbit, how do I see? It's fur is shining, gee, and to the D. Now we're, this is the B part, right? D, 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 G. Um, so we really just want to get from the G up to the C, and then back down again to the G. So I always, always tend to start the A section with this little. And that happens even before the, the downbeat. So we're going one, two, three, four. And then you kind of go four and bum diddy. So one, two, three, four. There's another one of those slide diddy, pull off diddy, bum diddy. So I just walk up the C by hitting the open B string, open second string, the open D string, first string, and then you hit the the your where your ring finger is playing on the C chord is the second fret of the first string to E. So you go B D E. Okay, let's work on that much. You 
add that uh, a bum diddy's worth of, of G in there after that intro lick. Slide diddy pull off, bum diddy bum diddy bum. Then two bum diddies on C. And then we have this lick. So that's a bum diddy at the fifth fret. And then a pull off diddy. That's at the second fret on the first string. And I'm not doing a strum diddy up here, I'm just doing just the notes. Pull off. And then we have these two hammer ons. Hammer on the first fret of the second string. So you're going B, C. And then you hammer the second fret of the first string. So that's D, E, B, C, D, E. And then a bum ditty on the D string. So that's. Just with a that mini B section. So the whole A section. songs that um, sometimes people will play the B section twice or sometimes they'll play it four times before going back into another A section so um, different people play it different ways the the gist of the song you'll find is is the same no matter where you go again typically played in the key of A um, but for the banjo players we're in G today and um, just you, again use your ear when you find yourself at a jam every fiddler player fiddle player is going to play it a little differently and listen to how that particular fiddle player is playing it and whether they're playing that b section two times or four times before they kick back into the a section so now um i'm going to give you a little better view of the banjo and uh i'll play it a, a few times on the banjo and then have the fiddle join in so you can practice along with the fiddle so I'm going to play this six times through. Uh, the first time, just the chords. The second time, I'll play the, the licks we just went over. The third and fourth times, I'll have the fiddle added to it. So it'll be banjo and fiddle together. You can hear how they work together. And then the last two times, I'll, it'll just be the fiddle. So you can be the banjo player and play along with the fiddle. Uh, we're playing at 100 beats per minute right now. One. Two, one, two, here we go.
Thanks a lot for joining me again. I hope you got something out of today's lesson. Work with the metronome. Become friends with your metronome. And um, enjoy Big Eyed Rabbit. And we'll see you again uh, in a couple weeks. Thank you.